Now let's look at the S and P. So we saw a. Hey, let me go down to the weekly. See how big this rally really was. So in the past three weeks or so, we saw the S and P rise like a good, pretty much eight and a half percent. I can't make any crazy calls until it gets outside of this channel and like breaks and retests to the up or the or the downside. We got out out of it here for a bit and it looked like we were going to come and break and retest the downside but we got a green candle and now we're back in the channel so we're which still trending upward yeah which is crazy and it's it's crazy because when you think about bonds versus equities or stocks there should be some type of like negative correlation yeah and like so, like you are risk off but there it's not showing it so this this is why i think this will start to change this is part of the reason so when you look at bond yields they've actually been pulling back you know the last two days or so um and it's that's been kind of reflected in the stock market but it's also because the the reason yields have been rising so much is because demand for bonds has been falling through auctions and also there's more supply because the federal reserve once again offloading the balance sheet of all the bonds and so eventually and like one of one of the things that i think will happen is is that you will start to see more demand for bonds as yields continue to the upside and so you'll start to specifically short-term bonds uh because it doesn't really make sense to lock in a 10-year even for me right now or a 30-year especially if you believe that bond yields are going to move higher which means your bonds that you're holding are going to be worth less and so there should be demand to the point where yields start to fall and money starts to flow back into the long end of the curve and also the stock market, which will shoot the stock market back up. But we haven't seen that yet. And so that's why I still think there's more, even though these past couple of weeks have been abnormal, there's more downside in the stock market because the yields on bonds will continue to be more attractive we saw a slight pullback whatever be attractive and inflation's down too inflation's uh the cpi report which we're going to get to infl that kind of like anchored that thought for me so inflation came down and so now you'll probably start to see more demand for bonds especially if people think the fed has over tightened which there's a, a pretty nice camp of those folks and so they're expecting some downside but once we get through that, you know, equities are gonna gonna be in another crazy bull run, man. Because I think we figured out like master stimulus for like the next at least fifty years in the U.S. of living, in terms of the U.S. dollar living. Yeah, and with like the whole digital dollar thing, being able to like spread the dollar out more, that gives us more room for fucking up. To be honest. Yeah. Yeah. Man, yeah. Quick question: I just thought about something. Like when it comes to the Fed buying bonds, because and correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think they would be buying it to make money. Probably no. Just they, they buy it to. Uh, it's a form of QE. So when you look at it like this, so when they buy bonds, they pay you for those bonds. And so if you're a bank, you have liquidity now to use for whatever. Oh, they buy the bonds that the banks were holding. Uh, yeah, the banks. Are, I, well, I don't, the bank they, they the can't buy directly. They can't buy directly from the treasury. And so they use investment banks and other special purpose vehicles for that. And they don't really, as long as they're not junk bonds, obviously, because we talked about that, they don't really give a fuck what kind of bonds they are. They're no, they do. Them. They're only U.S. Treasuries. And the reason they buy U.S. Treasuries is because the default risk is null. So they only buy government bonds, no matter the term. Yeah. Okay. And so that's why if you guys ever hear uh, monetizing the debt or debt monetization, that's what that is. And it also included in that debt monetization basket is mortgage-backed securities. It's just kind of a relatively small holding relative to bonds, but it's still pretty large. <laughs> so you can think of monetizing the debt as like securitizing it and giving it value so it can be traded. Monetized. Well, there is already there's already there's already securities. So you can look at it like this. So if I'm an investment bank, right, and I buy a bond that yields two percent or less which most banks did over the last decade now interest rates start to rise the yields on those bonds are now five percent double at the yield i'm getting which means my 
the value of my bond is worth so much less. What am I going to do? That's an unrealized loss. And so now I'm pretty like basically fucked once those uh, securities or bonds mature. And so the Fed being the backstop that it is, the Fed comes in and they say, hey, how about this, man? You got 500 billion worth of bonds that are unrealized losses on your balance sheet. Let me go ahead and buy them from you. I'll give you the 500 billion. I'll take it off your hand. Of course, I can take on that risk. I'm the Federal Reserve. And I'll take those bonds off your books. And now that shores up the banking system um, and basically sends the debt to somewhere where when it explodes, it's like a controlled explosion and like it's in a room. Boom. And so it doesn't affect anyone type deal. And the Fed now they can't they can't hold these assets on their books forever. And so now they're in a position to where they have to actually get rid of them because they're going to mature and they're not going to reinvest in those bonds. So they're going to come off. And so now you have to have buyers for those bonds. And that's where the current problem comes in. And that if you don't have an adequate demand for bond auctions, you get more institutions, dealers just buying those bonds back, which we've seen an uptick in the last two. And you see less foreign demand in our largest holders is China and Japan. And that dropped from 68% down to 60 percent just in between one auction mm -hmm. and so that's a seven percent decline or whatever so yeah man uh i forgot what question you asked but i hope that answered it i just went through a lot there yeah no i was just